Your presenter. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to be in, in, in as a mechanic, doing any preparing the cars, motorcycle. Yeah, I want to be an engineer. That's why I have to study a lot of physics. Mm. Uh, it will depend because I'm going to go to the chemistry. Biology, chemistry. I want to enjoy all science subjects because I'm going to be a nurse. When it is rainy season, it's not difficult to get water. But when it reaches on dry season like June and July, we face a lot of problems. We go like 10 miles when we're walking, looking for water. Our animals get tired and others get sick because of water. There is a borehole in, the, in that town. I used to go there and I fetch some water, but its water was salty. It would, it would not be suitable for home purposes. In some villages, like where, I, where I'm coming from at Gankanga, the people, people who live in that village, they have a big problem because right now they have no water. For us to get water, we dug a big hole. When the rain water comes, there is water which is flowing and come into that big hole, but there is still jams. The first thing we need to do is get elevations, get distances, and then run the EPNet model just to make sure that everything checks out before we start installing. But I can work with you and show you exactly what okay. will need to be done. Engineers Without Borders is a, is a really interesting group. There's people from civil engineering and from mechanical and chemical engineering, so I think it's a great way to get involved. We started with an idea and we eventually developed that idea into a design. And with that design, we actually had the opportunity to take the design from, from paper and actually implement it in the field. Now, I can't think of any other circumstance as a student when I would get this opportunity. If you want to be a member, you know, you, you do a lot of work and it's, it's a lot of fun. You learn a lot. So we need um, 15 sixteenths and one and one sixteenth for metal drill. And then we need a two, a one, and a one and a half. I'm going to need a bigger wire cutter. Okay. We're gonna get all the, you know, all the materials here that we have to get here in Minnesota and bring it with. And then we'll be able to buy a lot of the wires and a lot of the other materials in Uganda. We started this relationship with the Uganda Rural Fund and we're specifically at the Hope Integrated Academy. A team had gone to Uganda the year before we went. Last summer we installed rainwater harvesting which took rainwater from the roof, stored it in these big storage containers. But the school is expanding, and so they needed more water than what they have. They said their biggest problem and the biggest issue is a clean source of drinking water, and they wanted even a more reliable one than rainwater collection. By having water directly on the school site, the students are able to take the time where they would be collecting water and apply it to studying for their exams and really working for school. 
We try to keep each one under 50 pounds. It'll probably cost 15 bucks or something to check for each person. It's probably easier for someone to repack these in their own duffel bag. We thought the pump would probably fit in there well. Oh, okay. So I, you think I'll So we'll probably send that one with you. Yeah. And, and put the pump in there? Yeah. Okay. I was so busy because I was graduating in May that it didn't hit me until like the week before. I had traveled other places before, nothing like Africa. on this upcoming trip is we have a well drilled. We're going to be placing a pump in the well and then we're going to be extracting water and pumping it to a tank up on the hill. We are going to pump that into a storage tank and then from that storage tank we're going to have two taps. One of the taps is going to be for the family and the volunteers who live kind of up by the hill and the other tap for the distribution system is actually going to lead all the way down to the school so that'll be available for the students. We'll be powering the pump with some solar panels that we're purchasing in Uganda. With that, we should be able to provide up to 500 students 15 liters of water per day, which is generally accepted as the inadequate amount to at least do all your basic washing, cooking, drinking. We also have two public health students who are going to be working on a malaria net project, so um, distributing about 1,000 malaria nets to the surrounding community. So this is one of the trenches we need to dig. So you know, 15 or 20 meters here, and then yeah, 15 meters here. Up at the top, about a similar length that runs behind the house. The soil in that area is very hard, and it's uh, very tough to dig through. We had the pickaxes and had these hoes. So we started digging, and we made a dent in the ground. But at this rate, like we're not going to get the trench dug. We only have about four weeks on site. If the trenching takes a lot longer than we expected, then that can push the rest of the project back. We decided to ask the students. The students would get part of their tuition paid for for every 10 meters they dug. So the students got really into it and were great workers and they were very efficient and knew how to dig. The school being located in an area which is um, having a poor population, many parents do not afford school fees. In Uganda, basically people drop out of the school when they don't have school fees. Some of them, they have the parents, but the parents are not, can't assist in their education because they are very poor, peasant farmers. We reduced the school fees so that at least anybody can be able to meet the fees. Or if someone is very poor, anybody who is interested in assisting an unfortunate child can support such a child. Some of them, they are orphans and they don't have any parents. We have got like 10 such students who are living in childhood families. So then he has to come at school, then in the evening he has to go and do the, the work of the parent. They can't um, get time to read. There's like a lot of work to do at home when they reach home and they are already tired and at home there are no fuel, no electricity like they can read at night. The challenges are very many. My hope would be for them to finish here, they get good grades, they go to colleges, and after graduation, then they would be able to get uh, good jobs. At Hope, um, we provide like different type of education, including practical education. They have entrepreneurial skills now. They can go start a small business using the limited resources available. Basically, it will be a good deal to help them, help themselves. This is what we are trying to do. 
build up something within them. Our The pad up there is going to be six feet, so you're going to have from ground level to six feet is the bottom of the tank. You have to measure what the height of the tank is and see where the outlet's going to or the inlet's going to be. That's how we'll know how long the pipe needs to be. For. Yep. Ready for installation? Yeah. Cut through your last step. They've got enough flex in them that we kind of come up at an angle that we may have to take a little more of the bushes out to yeah. kind of smooth that uh, bend out. Give me a little bit more of this. Okay, Let me... that way, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Do you want it in feet or do you want it in meters? I mean, let's do it in feet. I mean, 35 feet. Okay, so from the well to the tank, it's 58 feet. Um, from the well to the bottom of the tank. To the bottom of the tank. So then add like another 12, 12 roughly. Yeah. Would you say 58? Ah, uh, 58, yeah. So, so it's about 70 feet. feet to the top of the well to the top of the tank. Yeah. This one is long. It's too long. Do you have shorter? This one? Yep. So I need to just four like this with the nut. One piece, 3.25 feet. So we have about 2,000 feet of pipe. We got the same pipe for both water and for electric. It's underground pipe, threaded. We had to thread all these pipes to go from the pump, the borehole, to the top of the hill and then back down to the school and then to the existing water tanks and to the volunteer building. So it was a lot of pipe and each end was threaded, but there were plastic. Some of the metal connectors didn't fit exactly. The metal was cut into the PVC quite a bit. It took a little bit longer than we really expected. It was very difficult and frustrating. <laughs> what is Who needs a pipe Force first time distance. John Mary was really good at it. He stepped in. He and Catherine made a lot of headway doing it, and then that motivated the rest of us. Yeah. Sweet. So the goal is not messed up as much. Here's the end of the Yeah. Who here has had malaria? Please raise your hand if you have. Each of us tried to have a day where we could go with um, Tyler Marine and Amber out into the communities and do a survey. After you hang this up for a day outside, not in the sun, and then you can use it for sleeping. Now tell everyone I'm the mosquito. <laughs> so Amber's sleeping. <laughs> oh, I got to lay down.
I was just observing because Tyler and Amber did the survey, and so Amber would talk and Maureen would translate. A lot of the questions were like, how many people are in your family? How many kids are there? Where do you get your water? Do you, how do you treat your water? Do you know where diarrhea comes from? The last time they washed their hands, they used soap. Yeah. Some. Some. They say that they wash their hands, but I not quite sure if it's just because of the peer pressure because everyone else is saying they wash their hands, but some people did mention that they cannot afford soap. The majority of the households, they boil their water, but there are some that can afford firewood, which is kind of standard in this area that they can't really afford the firewood. They get their water from a dam, but the dam is three kilometers away, so it takes about two hours for them to get there to retrieve their water. Very few of the communities actually have functioning groundwater systems, so most of them rely on surface water for their drinking water and their cooking water and their bathing water. We didn't have water here. We used you know, that well down there, uh, but it dried out. Usually you know, during the dry seasons, you have to go three kilometers further this end or that end. If you want to get clean water, you got to be there like at three in the morning. <laughs> and it's, it's crazy. And you know, so you get the water and then, you know, pack up to go to school. It wasn't like the best real conditions to live in. When it rains, the water collects at one point. But what happens during dry season? In the dry season, uh, there's no water anywhere in, in the pond. So they have to move for like eight kilometers, 10 miles to get water where there's a small swamp. The water coming from the swamp was very murky. It was full of a lot of debris. And they had to use it as their drinking water. Throughout the world, there are people who struggle with water shortages. But I mean, seeing it to that extreme, it was just very eye-opening to me. I got to kind of watch some of their water sources dry up. When this dries up, they're going to have to go all the way to this other source, you know, five kilometers away. And it kind of like struck me. It's like, wow, you know, this already seems really far away. And you kind of see what they do for water. A student at the school, Rosemary, she lived in a rural community. And they had water from the swamp that they were drinking. So we, we decided to make a bio sand filter. And the bio sand filter is basically like a huge vase. And you put different layers of aggregate and sand in there. In the sand, like a few centimeters below, a layer of bacteria grows. And so when the water trickles through the sand, that bacteria eats the bacteria in the water. The way it works is you dump in dirty water and essentially get clean water out. The water will go down through the sand and through the smaller aggregate. And at the bottom, there's a pipe. And so the water will filter through, and it will come out clean. The thing with the wood is it was very heavy, and it was damp. And so it was very difficult to cut. And that made it difficult to be precise. Okay. The tubing we got for the pipe was thicker than we intended. And so all of those things came into play in the quality of the product. Then eventually, we transport to the community that was gathering the water from the swamp. And after a couple of days, there were some problems, there was some leaking. The swamp water was really, really dirty, and it ended up clogging up the filter within a few days, so the water wasn't able to get all the way through the filter. It was a little disappointing because we, you know, you always want it to work perfectly, but we learned a lot from it, and we know what supplies we can get now. We knew that it was just kind of a pilot project. It was, what can we learn from this? The project didn't work nearly as well as we had hoped, but we still think there are some applications for these biosand filters in communities that don't have quite as bad of water quality. And there are a few modifications you can make to the biosand filter to actually accommodate for very murky, very dirty water that will help it out. We might be able to help a lot more families, um, and they, they might be able to make them themselves.
This is labeled 1, 2, and then the green oh. is ground. Painted black tube will be a water line that's actually coming from the well. So that's going to be yeah. pumping water up the hill from the pump in the well, and that'll go to the holding tank. This closest one, you'll see it's painted yellow with some yellow paint on that next section. Uh -huh. That's where the water is coming back down from the holding tank, okay. and that will be for the tap here in the school. Uh -huh. Yep, so that those two are water. The third one in the middle, you can see the electrical wires coming out. Uh -huh. <clears throat> We have to be able to sense a float switch in the tank up here so that when it gets full, it'll turn the pump off. Oh, okay. And so that wire has to go to the controller in the, in the computer room. When we installed the solar panels and connected it to the pump, we had this really heavy and bulky guarded cable, so if someone dug through it, it wouldn't break the wire. It had some metal around the outside. So it ended up just being very heavy, and it was very difficult to work with just because it was so bulky. Gonna add each panel on, and we're gonna have to be able to kind of work right underneath each panel. So we have to oh, bolt okay. the front and the back, so we have to figure out kind of a system to how we're gonna get, you know, either underneath this rack or. Yeah, right, right. You ready to go up? That leg might go in the trench right there if you don't pick it yep. back up. Keep it over. And watch me, watch me, watch okay. me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Nate, you kind of keep an eye on what's going on up top, and Emily and I will maneuver. Yeah, you guys are too about far? four foot, four feet too long. Too long? You guys are above my So panel. if you could just take it over to the other side and get on the other side of the panels. Careful, yeah, just be careful because you're over the panels right now. So keep going. Slowly go down. Slowly down? Yeah. <coughs> All right, you're okay. Our group got along so well and I think it was because we took time at the end of each day to have fun together and that played into being able to work better together. In terms of tying off those knots, the you've got a what? It's a three-strand braided rope. Yep. So. And two of them will go through. I mean, would go through there. So, however you think the best knots are to tie there, if you're, if you're the best knot tie. Yeah. So let's, let's let's get the end of that rope. And... We have to place the pump in the well, and our well is about 52 meters deep, which is around 180 feet. Help me the biggest process. risk definitely is installing the pump, making sure it works. If we end up dropping the pump in the hole, there's no way to really get it out. But then this is going to wrap around and see that there's a gel. So we want to bury it and then wrap it side here. So we want to be able to get this and then get this connector. And so 
so that we can bury some of this. So you want to pull it apart and wrap it around. And then this part snaps, yeah. Is that gel just really easy? It's going to be pretty easy, I think. Yeah. Somewhere there. Right there. So if we can just really stretch it tight and then push it into. Goes into the right, isn't it correct? Yep. And then these cable ties we want to put on real tight. So I'll hold the pump. Like we didn't quite have the right type of pipe we hope to use to install the pump into the uh, well. So what we did is we had these 20 feet long pieces of PVC pipe that were kind of floating around in the air as we were trying to move it down and screw it in and screw them together. We had um, these plastic pipes and we had them threaded. And we did some rough calculations to make sure that everything would hold and we had a backup rope for the pump. But, you know, after we placed it all, we're like, oh, man, I really hope this all fits. Are we ready? No, well, we got to get that, get that last thing. Uh, we need our, uh, the steel straps. We got everything set up, and we realized that we forgot to thread the cable through the wellhead like we had needed to. That goes out at the oh, very end. Oh, shit. Right. The, the big black cable has to go through here. We need somebody to go in with a hacksaw and hacksaw uh, that part out right there so we can slide the cable in. Wouldn't it be just easier to take this off? Is that gel like reacting? Like no, the gel, no, the gel can be replaced. It, it can be, re clamps. it can be reset. This just comes right off. Yeah. No, okay. Yeah. So. Those come right on. Yeah. And then just to reconnect. Yep. Yeah. Is it M A W L? Yeah. I don't know. I don't really know the situation. So we had to unscrew everything and completely redo that, which luckily we found it out when we did because we hadn't started dropping the pump yet and would have caused a lot more issues if we wouldn't have realized it until later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe we should just send somebody to sleep out here at least tomorrow morning. Alright, so I'm just gonna get into that casing this week. Yeah, I can get that back up in the next one. Oh, there we go. You ready for this video? Bring the pipe? Lowering it down? Yeah. We're gonna go down to the pipe right here, so watch your hand. The other one is unthreading as we're threading this one. It's threading in the opposite direction. Yeah, like, so the coupling wasn't turning. Yeah, what we have to do. Yeah. Let's pull a bit up. Okay, pull up. Let's pull a bit up. Okay. Somewhere there. So you can so, pull that one too. Okay. Then try to fix. Yes, this, I guess this thing shears on this edge. Get a pipe wrench on it. Yeah, I did. Hold it with the rope. Easy regrip. Wait. I think we need to. It's not straight. Straight. Uh, is it okay? Uh, hold on, hold on. Maybe so. Oh, yep. Yeah. Not seated. Not seated yet. We had we have more extra pipes. We shouldn't waste our time with yeah, that. Yeah, let's take let's take this one out. Okay. Uh, let's jump with a thread. I think you got yeah, it now. Back. You got it. Yeah. yeah. Pipe six. All right. All right. So ready. You guys get the rope. Get the rope. Yeah, really. Get uh, some tape on the rope. Are you ready to lower? Now let's get the fitting in and, and we'll head on. Yeah. I'm gonna thread through this Which quick already. Right. Yeah, almost. Yeah. You're gonna see a side of fitting now oh, over yeah, that. Yeah. Over the one. We want one of the elbows. Oh, I'm you can turn on that many times. Yeah. 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 Heavy, hold on to that rope. Hold the rope. Yep, hold, hold the rope. Hold this rope. Are you holding it? Is this going in? Yeah, it's yeah, gotta go in. in. Okay, let's put, put it in. Put it in. The knot's gotta go in, right? Yeah. Should we come back up a little? Yeah. Oh, it's getting real heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Put, put the and then when do you cut? Okay. Get up there. Do you get a cut? Yeah, we don't need to cut it. Yeah. Nope. Okay. You're gonna set it down. Yeah. Put your fingers, everybody. Okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, but, putting the pump down the well was yeah, yeah, it was sure. stressful. Yeah. You know, it went in smoothly. You know, by the time we finished, it was dark. Good work, everyone. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Bravo. Everybody got fingers. <laughs> fun? Yeah. Got fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Quite a job. Uh, Nick, this is uh, Frank the Tank, and uh, we're ready whenever you're ready. Alright, let's make this happen. Are you guys uh, listening for any weird sounds? Uh, yeah, we'll be listening. We're ready down here. Over. Systems on, everything looks good. Pump shows us on now. I'm not hearing a thing. It might take quite a while to actually just fill up the pipe. We're not, uh, we're not feeling or hearing anything yet. You can hear a hum. Yeah, we can hear the pump, and I think, yeah, we're just starting to get some water. When we first started pumping water out of the well, our ion concentration was way too high. And we kind of expected this would happen, but it was still kind of a tense day or two. As the well kept continuing to pump, it ended up clearing itself out, and we got our iron levels to where they were acceptable for drinking water. We were also doing bacteria tests to make sure that the well water had not been contaminated with bacteria. And all of those tests came out clean. We know we have a very clean source of water. Overall, I'd say the project was extremely successful. We gave them water and it's flowing. The kids are very happy and they'll be able to take it home to their families for the dry season. It was a great feeling. We completed all of the aspects of the project that we wanted to complete and we did it on time. I got to experience a lot. I got to work on a lot of different things. I think I can really see the benefits that I've gained from being a part of it. I think it was a great project all around. Our kids don't now have to worry about getting diseases from water. They don't have to worry about walking miles you know, to get water. And maybe eventually, as Brent was explaining to me, if we have enough water from the pump, we can let the community come and you know, use some of the, uh, the water from the tanks, and I think they will really appreciate that. If it is a dry season and you don't have water in tanks, now we can use the water underground. It's the very big impact on our community. In the next few years, as they expand to being an orphanage with people living on site, They'll have a clean, potable source of water that they won't have to boil. For you guys coming here and help like, as much as you can, we really appreciate what you're doing for us. You come so far away, you know, sacrifice your money in you know, your vacation time, you can be out there having fun at some beach or so whatever. But you said come here, yeah, dig trenches and walk in the sun. We really appreciate so much. They did a farewell like concert for us at the end and sang uh, some songs in Lugana and then this, some songs in English. And the boys were playing the drums and then they had a choir that um, was like three lines and they were swaying back and forth to the beat. You could tell they were excited to, you know, give this to us. It's been a lot of fun getting to know all of you and coming over here and not sure what to expect, but the people here have been the greatest surprise, just so loving and open and caring. And it's been really fun to see the work kind of come along and you guys helping dig the trenches and helping with the sanitation building. It's been a lot of fun, so thank you. And it's been a great experience. They say that there's a time for everything. And there was a time when you had just come, and that time was to work. Now it is time to say farewell to you. Even if you know, one child's life is, is improved, 
you able to help her get the good education you know, she deserves to help her get it away in the community, help this one childhood family really get back on their phone and be able to you know, achieve their dreams. That's a success story.